Hey everybody again, Simon here, Projects in the Barn. And today we're going to be doing some more stuff to the Jaguar XKR. Well, not more stuff really, we're going to try and start it, see what happens. So on the last video, uh, we showed you doing the coolant temperature sensor, uh, which is this bit just down here. That one there. So if you've not seen that video, please go and check it out. It was the last one that I've done. And I did that for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, because um, I had a similar running issue on my very first XK8, probably six, well, yeah, about six years ago I bought that, something like that, um, where I was having poor running in idle issues, which turned out to be the coolant temperature sensor. And I've had quite a few comments with my running issues of the car that could similarly be the coolant temperature sensor. A lot of you have sort of indicated me towards that. And one subscriber in particular was saying about how he had poor running of his car. Um, so he swapped a few things out, including the um, coolant temperature sensor, which made it run worse. He fitted an aftermarket one, I believe. Put the original coolant temperature sensor back on again and it resolved all of his woes. So I think a combination of a few things there uh, got his car working properly. Um, so I thought for what it's going to cost me 30 quid, let's get it swapped. It's been on the car for 24 years or so. So um, it's worth just changing and seeing what happens. So that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to go over <laughs> the same old problems with my poor old engine and give it a start, see what happens. It'll probably do nothing but it's another bit replaced on my car and it's given me something to do. So for those reasons only uh, or alone, it's worth doing. So what we're going to do now is just do a hard reset on the battery. Uh, it's been on charge. In fact, it's gone into, I've put it on repair mode because uh, it wasn't quite topping up just with the charge. So it's gone into repair mode. So it's now shown as 100%. So I've taken all the uh, battery charger off. And the clock's going over. Hopefully you can still hear me. So we're going to go for a hard reset on the battery. I'm going to clear all the fault codes using my scan tool, uh, which you've seen me use plenty of times before. Go for a start, see what happens. I'll probably do nothing, like I said, but it's worth a shot and something else ticked off the list to eliminate. So if we just go around the back, I'll show you what we're doing with the battery. So this bit here seems to still scare lots of people doing a hard reset. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. Let me put my light on. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. So you can disconnect the uh, earth pole here, take the earth lead and touch it to the positive pole. That scares a lot of people because the battery is still connected. Um, but it is a recommended way to do it. Another way to do it if you are not comfortable doing that is to take off the negative lead here go into the car switch your ignition on to the run position and that will allow any excess um, power to run through that way as far as i'm aware but again this is not me telling you how to do it i'm going to do it my way which i'm going to do now and i'm going to do it by taking off that lead touching it onto the positive pole count for 30 seconds put it back on again and that should sort me out so i'm going to get a little terminal spanner i'm going to take that lead off and just do that bit. Right, so we're just going to disconnect my negative or earth lead. Careful not to touch any other metal part of the car because then you will short something out. Remove it, okay? So that's my earth terminal removed. Got a little negative sign on the battery then you have a positive sign on the battery over there and if it's long enough I've got a little cable tie here which might stop it from reaching all the way over no we're going to touch it onto the positive pole for 30 seconds okay you'll see no sparks because we're not connected by the negative lead to anything else so 30 seconds we'll go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three 
24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and one for luck. Okay, touched on there, no problem at all. But like I said, this isn't my how-to, this is how I do it. If you're not comfortable in doing that, please don't do it. Refer to the uh, technical bulletin from Jaguar or all the other Jaguar specialists out there, of which I am not one. I am just an enthusiast, please remember that. So if you've got any bad comments on what I've just done there, I've seen them all before. So <laughs> that's just how I choose to do it. Okay, so that's now securely back on there. Just nip that up and just make sure that's nipped up there because I've had the battery out before to charge. And we're not over tightening. But it wants to be a good connection. See, I'm just doing it loosely with my fingers. I'm putting no effort in it whatsoever. Okay, that is now done. So, okay, that's a hard reset. So we can now go to the car with my scanner, which is here. I purchased the iCar soft one. It does jack around Land Rover. There's my Land Rover, just out there. So let's go to the car. And I say, because I've disconnected the battery, done the hard reset, we will have to reset windows and the like. So let me get the camera set up in the car and then we can go ahead and do all the code clearing. Right, I hope you can see. Um, I can't see the screen. So if it ends up just me talking, it all going wrong, I apologize. But I'll try and keep everything in line with the steering wheel so you should be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in my scan tool, which goes just underneath here. Which is just underneath the fuse box on the right hand side footwell. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, I'm gonna switch my ignition on. Like so. And we're going to go to the OBD2. So hopefully you can see, hopefully you can see on there what I'm doing. If not, I apologise, I'm just going to go through it. Codes found 12. Read codes. I've got 12 codes. So let's go down to Jaguar. Jaguar, mass airflow sensor, circuit low. Okay. Intake air temperature sensor, circuit low, bank one. The fault code is not found in the database, okay. Cylinder one, misfire. Cylinder two, misfire. Cylinder three, misfire. Cylinder four, misfire. Cylinder seven, misfire. Cylinder eight, misfire. Injector driver misfire, emissions damage, misfire rate, excess emissions. System check not complete, and the fault code is not found in the database. Okay, loads of codes. I'm going to erase the lot. Yes, am I sure? Yes. Talking to the vehicle, please waiting. Please waiting. Erase command is okay. Roger that. So I'm going to go back up. And... Exit. Yes. And we're going to go in there again just to see if it's erased everything. Codes found two. Read codes. The code is defined by the manufacturer with no code for me. So let's go to Jaguar, select C1165. The fault code is not found in the database and pending system check not complete. Okay, because we've not allowed it to run properly. So I'm gonna come out of all that. Do I want to exit? Yes. Right, fault codes removed, ignition off. 
diagnostic tool unplugged. Hopefully you saw all that. Let's go for a start. Got hardly any fuel in here, that'll probably make a difference. Right, system check. It started all right, didn't it? Low brake fluid, driver's door open, bonnet open. There we go. Ah. Bonnet open, just sitting under a thousand RPM. You can see my fuel gauge is right down low. I'm not touching the throttle. My foot is off the throttle. See that? Not touching anything. Foot's here. Low fuel. Right, we're burning off the immediate fuel from the startup. Still not touching the throttle. Probably about 800 RPM. Between, well, about 850, maybe 900 actually. Still no fault codes. Just my bonnet open, boot open, low brake fluid. Still no fault codes. Down to about probably 800 RPM now. Still no fault codes. Wow. That seems encouraging. Something's got to go wrong in a minute, hasn't it? <laughs> it does. Holding idle. Still not touch the throttle. Throttle, my foot's still off it. Just leave it running. Still no fault codes. No engine light. No messages. So we're dropping down to about 700 RPM. What I do want to do is run the tank dry. I can't leave it running for much longer. I need some fuel in there. But that's definitely encouraging. I would say. Let's get out the car. Obviously because I've done a hard reset, you've got all your fuel trim levels and all that will need to reset. So we're about still floating around the 700 RPM, still no faults. Oh, it's dropping down a bit, look. Still no fault showing, not showing any misfires. See the RPM is still dropping down a little bit. We're going down to, oh, dropping to 500. I'm not going to touch the throttle, I don't want to touch anything. I want to let it sort itself out. Still no fault codes. Oh, it's dropping right down. 
I don't want to touch anything. Just letting it do its thing, working itself out. <laughs> Still not showing any fault codes. Oh, that's dropping right down, isn't it? And it's stalled. Wow. There you go. Still not happy, is it? That's still not a happy bunny. <laughs> but no full codes coming up. No engine misfire coming up, anything like that. We just check for any leaks around me. Coolant, which is bone dry, which I'm pleased to report. So, you know, the part that I fitted, I've got no leaks coming from that. Um, but hopefully you can pick that up in the video, the sound. It's sort of going in a cycle, like... That's my V8 impression. So it's going through in a cycle. Um, what I do want to do is touch the throttle. I don't introduce any false fuel into it. I want to try and get the fuel trims to level themselves out to sort itself out after the hard reset. If I start blipping the throttle, I'm going to lose that true value uh, as far as I understand it. Um, so, inconclusive. <laughs> I don't know what I've shown there, proved or disproved or otherwise. Um, but always say it always fires straight up, runs fine. What I'm going to do is going to go and get a load of fuel, throw that in there. Um, what I don't want to do is to run the pumps dry after replacing them. I don't want to be replacing them again uh, because I've broken them. So, um, yeah, we'll put some more fuel in it and see what happens. But, yeah, plus the hard reset done. All my codes have gone. Should we see if any codes have come back? Should we do that? Let's get in the car and check for codes. I think that will be the uh, way to finish the video. So, stay with me. Oh, I get in the car then hopefully bear with me I'll set the camera up I just want to show you real time so you know I'm not faking anything so let me just lock that leg out in there and put that down there right hopefully you can see now let's put the light on spin you around a little bit We'll get the scanner back in and we'll look for any codes. So the scanner's back on. Hopefully you can see that. Let's get the keys out of my pocket. <sighs> get OBD2. Can you see that everyone? Hopefully. Yeah, sorry, I can't see the, the screen. We'll just see what it, it um, comes up with. Probably can't see if I put it straight on. Talking of vehicle. Codes found. Two. Read codes. Jaguar. Fault code's not found. C1165. And the pending. So no new fault codes present. So no misfires. No nothing. That's interesting, isn't it? You'd have thought after running it like that, you'd have got a... Um, if I had an issue with cylinder misfires or anything like that, it would be there permanent and would show straight back up immediately. Um, so, yeah. Strange, isn't it? I don't know if we get any live data with the vehicle off. We'll see what it comes up with. <laughs> so 
so yeah obviously i'll probably need to have the engine running so this makes sense so we see if we'll start again we'll see what happens Try and keep the revs at about 600 RPM. Can you see that, everyone? Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. Should we turn my light off? It might be better. Try and hold the revs if I can. It's about a thousand RPM. So fuel system one state is open loop, fuel system two state is closed loop. Calculated load value nearly 35%, engine coolant temperature 61 degrees. Short term fuel level or fuel trim B1 minus 5.5%. We're at about 800 RPM. Long term fuel trim B1 and B2, or B1 0%. Short term fuel trim B2 minus 25%. Long term fuel trim B2 0%. Intake manifold absolute pressure at about 700 RPM is 87, 88 kPa. Engine speed 758 RPM. Vehicle speed, nothing. Ignition timing advanced with the number one cylinder, 16.5 degrees. Intake air temperature, 11. Airflow rate for mass airflow sensor going around the 10 grams per second, I guess that is, roughly. Absolute throttle position, 7.5%, because so I'm holding it on. Oxygen sensor output voltage, 0.8 volts. Well, that's working. Short-term fuel trim, 0.8%. Oxygen sensor output voltage, bank two is 0.8 volts so they're both so bank one and bank two is about 0.8 of a volt short term fuel trim uh 1.6 on bank two lambda 0.914 oxygen sensor current minus 1.5 milliamp equivalent ratio lambda 0.781 oxygen sensor current 1.56 so i'm getting readings on all the o2 sensors Fuel system one and two status now, both closed loop. Is that right? Still no fault codes. If I take my foot off the throttle, what's it going to do? Stall. Well, there you go. Let's turn that off. Take that out. <sighs> So, with my engine running now, I was getting, let's see if I can talk to you. Hello, hopefully you can see me. So, previously, if you recall, I was getting errors for the O2 sensors not giving me any readings, um, which a lot of you were telling me to swap out and change those. Um, but from all that live data there, from what I can read and what I understand, everything seems to be reading okay. The only thing I can't check on this particular scanner is the fuel pressure. Um, even though I've replaced both pumps, there is, and please tell me, advise me if uh, I'm wrong, I believe there is a fuel pressure regulator somewhere, which could possibly not be working properly. So that might be worth investigating. You know, I have tried to read the fuel pressure before, but mine's off a Schrader valve. I never had the right fitting to uh, connect to the Schrader valve. But everything else, I'm getting normal readings. Or they seem to be within tolerance. Um, I'll have to go back and watch 
what I'm gibbering on about now <laughs> with all the different values. But I'm getting a value off of everything where I wasn't previously. Um, and that's with a fully charged battery now. Um, everything seems to be normal. It's just um, keeping a smooth idle. Or well, keeping it idling about it stalling. That's, that's my problem. And when I drive it down here to the barn, it will drive. And as soon as I slow down, it's stalling. Um, so it could still be an air leak. Strange, isn't it? Because, say, if I, if I hold my foot on the throttle a little bit, it will maintain that idle. As soon as I take it off, so that's the thing, you know, if it's a fuel pressure problem, surely it's a fuel pressure problem right the way through the range. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'll hand over to you guys. What do you guys think? As I said before, I'm not just going to throw loads of parts at it um, senselessly. Um... It's interesting to see that I was having readings from both O2 sensors. That's good. Um, so that all appears to be working fine. Um, is it a fuel pressure, fuel regulator issue? My fuel pumps, as you'll know, if you haven't seen it, please go check back one of my first videos. I replaced both the fuel pumps. And a few people have said about maybe I've got a fuel pump issue. But I have replaced two or both fuel pumps with brand new ones. And again, my understanding of the fuel pumps is they don't both run simultaneously all the time to deliver fuel to the engine. I believe it's only powered by one, and one is there as a auxiliary or a backup should one fail, or um, if you need extra fuel for high-speed cornering or something like that. That's my interpretation and my understanding of having the two fuel pumps. Um, but again, I mean, the pumps are clearly working because it's putting fuel to the engine. Um, is it a pressure issue at the engine end, either via the regulator or something else? I don't know. I'd have to sort of dip into that a bit more. But yes, my learned Jaguar friends, what do you think? Um, what do you suggest? Um, is all that data I just spurted out mean anything to you? I don't know. <sighs> But anyway, the car started, it ran very well for um, a considerable period of time. And I am very, very, very low on fuel. Um, so, yeah, maybe I need to uh, go and get a couple of gallons and throw it in there and try the experiment again. But the positive side is I got no fault codes coming back up. Not one. There's not one fault code that's returned. So all the ones I had 12, if you recall, that I got rid of. Not one of them come up, whereas previously it was coming up with restricted performance, engine light, and then I was getting all the cylinder misfires. Well, on those occasions, no fault codes. It's a mystery, isn't it? It's a quandary. Let's get outside, shall we? Let me just show you the sky for a minute as I get out the car. Oh, my motorhome. That's going to be finished this week. Check out the videos on that. There we have it. So, yep, it's another experiment, pass or fail, I don't know, uh, mixed. But again, um, it's something else that we've done on the car and hopefully someone out there in Jaguar land will be able to point me in the direction. And of course, you're welcome to my barn for tea and chat and help me fix my car. Uh, so there we go, it's another bit done on the engine. So again, we're gonna park that for a little bit. I've got loads of other stuff to do on the car. My next job on the Jag is to get all these wheels off. I want to get the car up on axle stands um, and then we can show you what's going on underneath. Um, there's definitely two areas of welding that need doing and we're going to experiment with bonding, not welding. Again, this is a source hot topic on forums on the internet with bonding over welding. As you know, I can weld. Um, done lots of welding i welded up a part of the seal of my last jaguar xk8 and again i showed you all of that i'm not scared to weld however i'm intrigued to try the 
bonding method on the floor patterns of my Jag. It's a non-structural area. It's away from the seals and the jacking points. Um, so, yeah. And if you read the manufacturer, so 3M is the company that make it, and you read all their bumps um, on their website, the bond is stronger than the material that it's bonding together. Um, so, yeah, less of a fire risk and something new. Let me know what you think. But anyway, for now, from me, from Projects in the Barn, I'm going to say bye. Thank you so much for watching again. And if you'd like to hit the subscribe button, please go ahead and do so. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed what I've done. And you can hit that bell notification, which alerts you every time I put up a new video. So take care, everybody. We'll see you again soon. From me and the XKR, Projects in the Barn. See you later.